handlebars, another useful adaptation of mountain biking. And uh, in fact, I, I saw little lad Jamie Cartwright from the Royal Sutton Cycling Club in the under 12s at uh, Sutton Park. He'd also not only got his, his uh, mountain bike uh, uh, gear leaves on the top as well, because uh, the index system, he could have his hands on the top and change gear. And I thought it was another novel little thing to do that uh, some of these lads looking to mountain biking uh, and even at this level to adapting some of the things. Oh, well, there he goes back in the centre again. They imagine there that you also change gear. They'd had the mountain bike type. Uh, uh, overbar shifters as well. So a lot of crossover going on, a tremendous amount of development in uh, uh, in cycling bits and pieces, which we didn't have for many years, and it's quite fascinating. I hope we're not boring with all these technical topics, but, you know, it isn't just a bike. These are instruments used for sport, and a lot of development and money going into it, new technology, new uh, uh, components, new uh, materials as well, plastics, uh, Kevlar, aluminium, magnesium, you name it, it's happening all the time. But still, you've got to have the strength in your legs to ride the bike. You've got to have the guts and determination to go out training. Imagine these chaps when you're tucked up at home watching telly at night. Uh, many of the lads back in Britain, the amateurs, are out there training in the dark and miserable conditions. But these lads you're looking at now are professional riders, so they can train during the day. But my God, how they have to train too, to restand this sport which calls for enormous stamina and great technique and the Swiss at the moment overjoyed they've got two men in the lead Bate Babel and uh, Dieter Runkel but Runkel is now being challenged by Richard Granendahl of Holland carefully carefully does it Dieter Runkel on the drop No, that's not Paul Hedegas. Oh, Alfgaard. Oh, he's gone out. He's packed. <laughs> I thought they were sticking it up. But Paul Hedegas, well, <clears throat> he was said in uh, the cycling press in England he wasn't riding. Well, he started, but he hasn't finished. So perhaps that was uh, the kiss of death as far as he was concerned. Hedegas, who finished fifth in the Belgian Championship last year's Open Champion, is out of the race. Let's look again then at the technique and tactics here of Dieter Runkel. And you see all over his bike there, Scott racing. Scott very much in the mountain bike uh, field. And also they make goggles, handlebars, goodness knows what else. But uh, Scott, very, very successful company. They in fact uh, bought the Schwinn company, one of the oldest American basket manufacturers. Uh, Scott have done so well out of the way in which mountain biking has developed and they're also into motorcycling as well. They, they bought over the very well-established Schwinn Company in America, which had been a family business for many years until, I think it was uh, the year before last, end of 93, I think, when they lost it. Look at the way this fellow's going. Dino Runkel absolutely flying across the road here. Well, the Swiss have dealt the double blow, as far as they're concerned, to the rest of the opposition at the moment. But it's uh, not finished by any means. Because, ah, Grenadol has now made it up into second spot. And that, the third lap then, completed after 28 and a half minutes of racing. The gap 19 seconds back to those two chasers. And Van Sandfleet, who had previously been up with the top three now, has dropped off the pace. Adrie van der Poel on the left-hand side of his screen, the man who won the Amstel Gold Classic as well. And he's got the other roadman coming across to him, Mannion. Daniel Pontoni in the blue for Italy, previous Amateur champion, winner of the World Cup this year, is in uh, third spot behind him. And then Dominic Arno as well. The Swiss going bananas here. They've got yet another rider up in this little group. This is quite a tremendous performance as far as the Swiss are concerned. And Simonek has blown a complete gasket. Look, he's out of contention. That's the man they tip for the top. He's not going to make it. Join us to see if he gets up there, though. Back in a moment. Over here. Over here. I want to watch my soaps. What about my match? I've got the solution. Oh. Oh. A double feed antenna is the answer to all your problems. Install these two feeds on your dish and you'll receive channels broadcast from satellites at two different orbital positions.
Welcome back. Dieter Runkel now taking the lead. Bait Webel was in the lead for an awful long time now. He's taken over and Grundel having his own little private battle with the previous leader, Bait Webel. Those are the top three in this World Championship for the Open Championship from Eschenbach in uh, Switzerland. The crowd enjoying the occasion here. The Swiss tremendously involved in the sport of cyclocross. Can't have had a better weekend as far as they're concerned. Essenbach, just some 4,000 people live here, or 4,700 4, if the figure's are exactly right. They've done a tremendous job. In fact, they have one of the, the biggest clubs, the uh, uh, Velo Club uh, Alpina, locally, with some 400 members or such who've organized this race. There's one of the Americans there shouldering his bike and coming out in to, I think, decide to call it a day. The local populace have really turned out. The last time this race was held here, uh, not this particular World Championship, but race was held a couple of years ago. Hedegaard, as it was, of uh, Belgium that ran out victor. Well, today he's retired from the fray, and at this uh, World Championship level, the man who's last as Open Champion has decided to call it a day. Mind you, he's won some like 20-odd like races across the, the winter, so perhaps he feels he's done enough to justify his uh, rainbow jersey, which is what's there at, at stake at the moment. Quick changeover of the bike for Dieter Runkel. In fact, the, uh, one of the German papers occupied a full page writing about this man who they tipped as uh, a likely man to win the championship this year. And my goodness, they were right. He had been riding with, the, uh, with Jan Raas's uh, squad uh, last year, mainly on the road, but uh, switched into cyclocross and now has gone his own way and joined the, the Scott team. And he really has come good right now. The difficulty is with the cyclocross season starting way back uh, at the tail end of October as here we see that little group fighting for second and third place. Richard Grunnell is in the Dutch colours, the orange colours, just up in front of the other rider, Bates Babel from Switzerland. And then we see back there Van Saltveld and Van der Poel, the other Dutchman coming through at the moment. Well, I wonder if Adrie can make it up there and get himself... Uh, a bronze medal. As he won a bronze medal way back in 1992 at uh, Leeds, he's been the most consistent performer. And in fact, he's come into this series, Adrie van der Poel, I'm just talking about it, but in very good form because that uh, uh, Degum in Belgium in the Super Prestige series, he won that one just uh, on uh, the uh, 25th of December. Yes, it was the 25th of December he took that one. And in fact, on the 18th of December, he won a, a race in Belgium as well in the Super Prestige series. He'd been lying fourth in most other rounds of Super Prestige series at the bowl and He just seemed to be getting his form right to come into this level here. And in fact, um, we're looking at a man who's not really been up there at all in the World Cup or the Super Prestige. He's kept his form right till now. Dieter Runkel has, has set his uh, mind on getting this uh, gold medal today, and at the moment he looks like he's got that. And unless he blows a gasket, and this young rider here, then Richard Gronendahl, who just some 23 years of age, comes up and catches him. Gronendahl, the second man in the Dutch Championships this year, the junior champion, here with the number 97, Bate Fable. He's got away from him. Fable taking a short line across the corner. Cut the graph a bit. Some man there with an umbrella. He got Limbacle. I'm pretty sure that's where we had the cyclo cross when uh, Stuart Marshall got the world championship for Great Britain as a junior in thick mud. I've never seen a like in my life before. People just losing their shoes and their boots, and that oh, was terrible. My car got stuck in the mud as well, and that take about 10 men to bounce it out. This is a superb, smooth performance by Dieter Runkel at the moment. <laughs> He's opened up such a tremendous gap, and Grunendahl coming across now. Still being hotly pursued by Bait Fable. Up, 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 
Well, those two, I think probably Vable's doing the right thing at the moment uh, in that he's, he won't chase his countrymen down, I don't think. So what he's got to try and do now is probably a sensible tactic. If Vable's decided that uh, he doesn't quite have the, the, the speed and the strength to go across and catch up with his, his uh, countrymen, he might just as well uh, sit there and go with Grunendahl and try and pick Grunendahl for the, uh, the silver medal. That may be his tactics at the moment because uh, this man is such a hot pace at the moment. He's got to be Grunendahl to do the pulling back. Looking for the best part of the course in which to ride your bike. Actually, the left-hand side, yes, was favoured by uh, Possipil, the uh, winner of the Espoir carry. That's the line that's being taken now by Vable, but he's now gone back again onto Grundahl's wheel. It seems a bit quicker out of the mud, yet they found the way in the centre. Oh, that effort. What you can't do, you can't get too far out of the saddle, though, and lean forward, because your back wheel spins around. You've got to sit back. You see this saddle he's got here is well set back, even though the bike is fairly upright. They like to get the saddle, saddle well back, so they can sit over the back wheel to get plenty of grip. Grundell riding at a time, as you can see there, when uh, Vable has decided to run the Italian flags. They've got to have those at half-mast, I think, because Pontoni is nodding with a shout at the moment. The man who took the... World Cup this year was looked to be in such tremendous form, but I think half the problem is that when you ride uh, yourself out the early part of the season, as we watched our leader here, did a run for going away from the rest of the field. Pontoni started way back uh, in the first round, winning that one, and this does say dates way back to October. We watch these lads in slow motion now. You've got to really time your season. I think probably old Pontoni has probably blown a gasket. Uh, he won the early rounds, he went to Corva, won that one, he won the one in Spain, uh, then he went on to uh, Belgium and dropped back a bit into third, and at, uh, Sir, um, at uh, Sutherland Sart he finished third again, but he's done a point winning to take him through, but that was a sure sign, Pantani started a uh, very good early part of the season, dropped off the form, and now I think the Italians are going to be very upset that they haven't got their man up with a shout for medals. Here we are, you see the chats with the, the Karcher sprayers there, the power spray to hose down the bikes and you see now why they need those sprays just look at these conditions disgusting well, nice of you to sight across rider <laughs> you may have spotted by the way there that uh, the Dutch rider Richard Grundle riding with a single chain ring on the front. Quite a number of these are quite happy to put up with the uh, normal single ring at the front. And on both sides of the ring, there is a protective uh, chain ring which stops the chain jumping off. So, rather like you've seen some ordinary sports bike with a chain ring on the outside with a chain uh, cover of some description, it'll ring as such. Uh, then they have one on both sides of the actual uh, teeth, but it stops the chain from, from jumping off the sprockets when you, when you change gear. Lots of riders getting lapped, and we've only now come through the uh, onto the fourth lap of the race. We had the same thing before in the Espoir, which went in for 50 minutes. So the the officials saying, "Come on, lads, so you've come all this way to ride the World Championship." One of the riders on the left-hand side being pulled over. Yes, both these going, I think, out of the contention. That's it, lads. Hard luck. Come all this way, and you just ride round for half an hour, but it shows the great gap that exists in certain parts of the world between the top men of Europe and those men from other parts of the world. Our leader, Dieter Uncle of Switzerland, looking remarkably cool, calm and collected. There we are, Loch Zweigrunden, that's just two laps yet to go in the championship. So they've gone through uh, four, and we've got the fifth and the sixth laps just ahead of us. Adi van der Poel in the orange jersey, together with the French riders Dominic Arno, uh, Emmanuel Magnin, and uh, Jerome Ciotti has made his way up there as well at the moment. But they're out of contention for those medals unless something disastrous happens to the, the riders at front. A little bit like Pontoni trying to get up to them as well, but I think he's left it a lot too late. That's a lap rider in the green crash helmet. And that gives you confirmation of the gaps at the moment. Grandal and Babel fight their own little battle for the silver and bronze medals. And I think probably Babel 
could be doing the right thing. He was sitting on Gronendahl's wheel and waiting, but he's got to be very careful not to let a gap open up because once that happens, Gronendahl will be disappearing down the road and saying bye-bye, thank you very much indeed, and off he goes. He has just left this lot for dead, has he? Just disappeared off down the road and... Uh, Amazing performance then, Dida Ronkulu. Time to see it exactly right. He took the Swiss Championships ahead of uh, Bait Fable, and in third place uh, was Honiger.